it's lovely to have you and Paul here um, on the last day of the exhibition. It's been a huge success, a phenomenal response by members of the public to this exhibition. And it has been here since I think the 3rd or 4th of February, and today is the 11th of March. And Kevin, I am delighted um, that you're here because this is not your first time seeing the exhibition. You've been in a few times. Yeah, I saw it about a month ago, uh -huh. and uh, I was delighted to see that it was up for so long. So I said, oh, great. I've had loads of time to come back and see it again. And then I realised that I didn't have, you know, the other day I realised I had one day to see it again, yes. so I came rushing in yesterday to see uh -huh. it again. And I abducted you in the process, Kevin, because I was very curious to get responses from not just, um, you know, visual artists, but artists right across the board. And um, you were you were pretty much impressed, you know, from what you said. There was enough space to write what you wanted to say, so it was a perfect opportunity to meet Helen and um, yeah. Paul today. I was uh, I was just I was blown away the first time and uh, even more so the second time. Uh, it's just so much in it and uh, it's relentlessly good. There isn't one piece that doesn't insist that you stop and have a long conversation with it, you know. And uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful work and it's it's you know it's it's one of the best pieces of art I've seen in any medium for a long, long time. And just. Thank you for making it, and thank you for getting it here. It's brilliant to hear that, you know, because artists <laughs> love to support other artists, and they're extremely generous. So, Helen, how does it feel to have this kind of endorsement from Kevin? <laughs> <coughs> It'll cost you, you know. <laughs> you can slip. I'll slip you the, the brown envelope later on. Um, I am kind of speechless. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Only for we're sitting here with Kevin. I wouldn't believe it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your lips moving and telling me all this, but um, Jesus, I really am speechless, aren't I? Do you know, I've said before, Helen and Paul, that it's a pity that you live so far away from mm. Wexford, because to be in the presence of your work, I've had the privilege of being here pretty much, you know, most days, and to see the public come in and grown men cry, you know, and, and I mean that in response to some of the emotions that you've captured. It's priceless, and I suppose really for you to be here and hear this, you know, Kevin's not being paid to do this. You know, it's a case of just genuine, a genuine response. You know, and it's lovely for you to hear this. It is, and the fact that you're there to tell me, and people have been writing down their comments, and to actually see people posting about it on Instagram and on Facebook as well, um, to know that it has an audience that spans from, you know, children in school all the way up through to old, old age pensioners, you know, people that are older than us, because the underlying story behind it, everybody can identify with it, you know, not everybody has been happy and blessed and outgoing for their entire life. So there's always been a time where you had to put on some sort of a show and, and dig deep to try and, you know, pull on your big girl pants and stand up and be confident. Uh -huh. um, Paul, you must be very proud because you play a major part in this exhibition getting here. Of course, I'm uh -huh. hugely proud. Uh -huh. Hugely proud. And I suppose I've seen Helen's work develop over the years uh, to get to this stage. And I can see it's going to develop more and more as the years go on. But yeah, hugely proud. And the fact too that the lockdown diary has been shared, I mean, it's a gorgeous tribute to you and to Helen, but most of all to your late mother, Noreen. Yes. It's lovely to show and share the intimacy of um, a very loving relationship, you know, during lockdown. And sadly, Noreen has passed away, but it's a beautiful celebration of a very, very happy time. And I suppose, really, when you look at the combination of art forms, the storytelling, the sculpture, the paintings, you know, it's, it's, it's tangible, you know, for artists. You know, when I'm just thinking from your perspective, Kevin, as an artist who makes the ordinary extraordinary in your in your own performances, um, you, you, you can see this. Yeah, <clears throat> I must say I haven't uh, engaged with the lockdown diary aspect of the of the show yet because I was just so mesmerised by the sculptures that I haven't seen beyond them yet. I mean, well, you, you'll find out that I can't yeah. spell the word Hoover. <laughs> yeah. As well as not being oh. a great person for hoovering, so I'm like, not a great person for spelling it either. To me, I, like, I've hovered my way through lockdown, obviously. Yeah. But to me, there's another whole exhibition there in the back, you know, you know, beyond the, 
sculptors, but I haven't, I haven't got to that yet. That you know, lockdown diary. I haven't, I haven't got beyond their sculptures, you know. It's just, uh, yeah. The whole thing about the lockdown diary is that it's proof positive when you're in an environment where you're surrounded by positivity and reinforcement, where nothing is expected of you, and that you are loved for what you are and you're appreciated for what you are and you're told that you're wonderful you can actually flower you know you blossom and my confidence improved kind of you know like on a meteoric level during lockdown because of that because i had paul who was reared by noreen and billy and um you know that sense of being appreciated and genuinely you know loved for who you were and taken at face value that there was no weighing and measuring and judging you know it was it was amazing it was a noise time with both of you was a gift a yeah. very precious gift it you was. know um, and beautifully illustrated Helen beautifully and she, captured. you know I didn't kill her off with my bad cooking or <laughs> she didn't you know suffocate on under you know cat fur or whatever when uh -huh. she got out of that bedroom but um, the joy that you brought into the, the house and, and the fact that we had, you know, somebody other than the, my cats to actually, you know, rally around and to support and protect. It was a wonderful time. And also on social media, I was thrilled to see other people posting about how they were lonely and feeling intimidated by having no people interaction and not having socializing activities going on and that they were getting depressed or that they were feeling, you know, that they were losing part of their self. Yes. And I kind of thought, I am so thrilled that people, ordinary other people who wouldn't have known what it's like to have a lack of confidence and self-belief their whole life, that certain people would have engaged with those feelings because of lockdown and I felt that there was a kind of a kinship you know that, that yes. finally other people and I thought right well my art has a relevance Absolutely. that there are people who actually might be able to relate to those feelings of inadequacy and feeling less than and you know yeah vulnerable yeah and that you're you're locked within a room and that you know you're putting posters on the windows to advertise. And I suppose, Helen, I'm conscious as well that the whole idea with this exhibition is, is a celebration of creativity. It's a celebration of self-expression in whatever form you want to, to, to call it. And the important role that the arts play. I mean, it's we, we were just delighted. The exhibition initially was launched in Flowerfield Arts Centre during lockdown. Then it went to the uh, Island Arts Centre in Lisbon. But this is the first time that now in Struil Arts Centre in Oma, before it goes to the Alley Theatre in Stavane, that actually the COVID restrictions have been lifted and mm -hmm. people have been able to come into this exhibition, visit it, return, you know, and, and thoroughly see it engage with it. And, and, engage. and to have you there as well, because it makes a huge difference to have somebody who knows the narrative behind the work, yeah. who knows the artist personally, who knows my process and my thinking, and to actually be able to, you know, encourage people to stop and think and really look and see the story. And the thing is as well that they're not just, you know, my story, they're everybody's story, exactly. you know, and it's nice to be able to have something that can open minds and have a variation on interpretation, you know. I mean, yourself, Kevin, I mean, your whole career, it's about interpreting other people's characters and, you know, the voice behind the face or, you know, what's going on in their minds. You're able to kind of latch on to, you know, other people's mindset that they're hiding the whole time. So it's a bit like what I'm doing. I can't... You caricature. Uh, I can't compare them. <laughs> Well, as a guru, <laughs> as a guru, um, Kevin, and as your, you know, when you think of all the different roles, um, your 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 attention to detail and observational skills is an artist of a different sort as well, because you translate that and entertain us. Yeah. Well, you've entertained me. I and, mean, and Jesus Christ, I I love watching you on television, and it was such a joy to see you in. Um, Derry Girls. Girls, yeah. I thought the the final series of Derry Girls triumphant. Literally. We were kind of, you know, I was actually teary on the last episode thinking that's the last one ever, is it really? 
you know, Paul was, you know, he enjoyed it and he knew that it was going to be good, but I get attached to things, uh-huh. you know, and if something is very short lived, I tend to, you know, it's all or nothing with me. Uh-huh. I either don't engage or I do engage wholeheartedly, mm. but um, it was such a joy, such a joy to unleash you onto a whole new generation. generation yeah. Yeah. With, I grew with, up with you. And you were talking about, we were talking earlier on about people engaging with uh, with an exhibition or not sometimes you see you know people would just breeze through an exhibition and and um, not not spend long you know I, I have breezed through a lot of exhibitions you know you, you look at someone and you think well, well this isn't going to take long you know but this was the opposite you know like I was just completely engaged as soon as I saw the first piece you know and, uh, when something something either uh, draws your attention or doesn't, you know, and, you know, you kind of know as soon as you walk in. Right? Yeah. 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 Stops in your tracks. Yeah. Somebody Those said are. the other day when you had him on the telephone, um, beautiful nightmares. Yes. That mm. does describe that yeah. was a certain Elliot, aspect, yes. A very, very talented yeah. young poet and we had Fermana writers down, we've had schools visit, we've had, um, uh, performance artists and um, we've had a whole range of generations mm. we have experienced this exhibition and I'm excited about it going now on to the Alley Theatre in Spam. I look forward to the day where we see your work Helen as public art and mm. um, we had um, Ethna and uh, James up from Cork who are Liam. Yeah, or Liam who were they drove up specifically to see the exhibition they'd never met you before and they're in the business of public art and I just cannot wait to see these pieces translated into into a scale that are monumental in the context of um, in, in the outdoors because they need to be witnessed and to be experienced is really really important you know and and I think I'm so so proud of what you've achieved I'm so proud of the fact that Oma's been able to host this and um, thank you so much for bringing well, it. We, we drove up through a winter wonderland today I mean until we got to the outskirts of Dublin there was no sign of the snow and then I was like oh Jesus is that plastic off there in the hills that I'm looking at you know where they're growing mushrooms or something and then yeah the dawn uh-huh. it's snow and then the the closer we got to here the more the more it was a white covering everywhere uh-huh. but thankfully the roads were okay but um there was a stage when I said oh my god there's definitely snow in that there skyline you uh-huh. know but we're we're lucky down below in um the hookhead the weather has been Baltic, but you know, no snow, a lot of rain. Uh-huh. But, you well, know, you're very welcome to the warmth of the north. <laughs> oh, Oma. definitely, yeah. And the, the warmth, the reception that I my work has gotten up here. Yes. And I mean, I am now, I suppose, more considered a Northern Ireland accent artist than I am a Southern artist uh-huh. because you haven't another, the accent yet. A, no. Another Wexford artist met her in the art centre in Wexford, and she said, um, "And what part of the north do you come from?" <laughs> 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 and I am born and reared <laughs> in Wexford. She obviously wasn't listening to my accent, but she said, "Oh my God, I thought you were from the north. All your work is up in the north, and your exhibitions are up in the north." And I said, "Yes, it just happens that." Northern Ireland really do appreciate my work. Well, really. I was delighted to hear it's going on to the alley in Straban from here because, you know, when I rushed in to see it again in Oma, I thought, you know, it could be a while before I see it again. But I'm, I'm going to be following you to Straban. You know? Will you? And <laughs> bring other people, tell mm. other people about it. Mm. You know, it, it's all about getting your name known. Um, Selling the work would be nice because it would be nice to have money coming in so that more money can be put into productions. Mm. You know, and you've sold, an you've sold it affair. as part of this exhibition as well here, which is lovely. And I suppose it's more, it's as much about the experience as well. You know, I too. just, I cannot believe how people have actually connected with it. And it is a case of when you come in and you look at something, it either resonates or it doesn't. Mm. And people who had a certain journey, they'll look at something and they'll, they'll identify, there'll be something there, a telltale sign, that'll pull at a heartstring or a memory. And if you're invested in something that feels like it's connected to you, that's something to treasure, mm. you know. It I is. suppose that's the beauty of the arts. And 
um, continued success, Helen. Thank you very much. In your work and to Paul in your encouragement and and support. Uh, support. And Kevin, look at the forward engine to behind the, the HMC. Absolutely, <laughs> and huge uh, congratulations, Kevin, on your work and continued success. And Thank thanks you. a million for your kind words. Mm. Thank uh, you. I yeah. might actually have you, nice you know, write an essay about my my art as a a celebrity critic. Yeah, well, I, uh, I you know, there's a little comments column, you know, which is a tiny little strip, and I, I used up half of that space by saying words fail to convey <laughs> what what the quality of this art, and I only had about four words left. Obviously. I wouldn't have minded so if you had taken over the whole page. I do need more space. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is an opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us from Stuhl Arts Centre at Tribes and Tribulations as it continues to go on tour across the country. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you. Thanks a million, guys.